one thing you emphasize is dew point. Yes. You know, a lot of growers go by relative humidity, but you go by dew point. Can you explain the difference between the two and why there's an emphasis on dew point sure. versus relative humidity? Yeah, it, this is a common question. And relative humidity, the first word, relative, it's a relative value. And um, relative humidity is made up of two variables. And the two variables that make up relative humidity is the temperature of the air and the amount of moisture in the air. And if you change either of those variables, the relative humidity is going to change. So when people say, oh, I can control relative humidity. Well, in reality, you can't. It is not a controllable variable unto itself because it's made up of two, the temperature and the amount of water, which we call dew point in the air. An analogy I like to use is let's say you have a loan and you want to change your monthly payment. Well, there's no dial to turn up or down to change your monthly payment. You can change the interest rate, that'll change your monthly payment. You can change the principal amount of the loan, that'll change your monthly payment. You can change the term of the loan, that will change your monthly payment. But there's no individual thing that you can dial up and down that is the monthly payment. The monthly payment is the result of these other variables, be it the length of the loan, the principal of the loan, the interest of the loan. Relative humidity is the same. Relative humidity is the outcome of the temperature of the air and the amount of moisture in the air. Move either of those and you move the relative humidity. So what are we doing? We're controlling the two components that make up relative humidity. And so dew point is the amount of water and the temperature, dry bulb temperature is the amount of temperature. So now you can add or subtract the uh, temperature of air, that's easy, heat it, cool it, or you can add or subtract moisture in the air. And by controlling those two variables, that's where you wind up with your resultant humidity. So at the end of the day, when you're drying and curing flour, the relative humidity is no longer important if you're able to control the two important variables. What's the air temperature around the flower and how much moisture or the vapor pressure around the flower? Now, once you hold the right vapor pressure, and we found that a 54 degree dew point, which relates to vapor pressure, that's interchangeable numbers, the flower will dry to equilibrium. The vapor pressure of the flower will get reduced down to that vapor pressure of a 54 degree dew point. And now it's at equilibrium, the flower won't dry anymore. That's why you can go on vacation and you can even say, you know what, I'm not going home. I'm going to spend another week on vacation. And when you get home, the flower is not going to overdry because it came during your first week's vacation down to equilibrium to match that dew point. Well, you spend another week away. It's just going to hold there at that same dew point, at equilibrium. What's happening now is you're increasing the cure on the flower. Now, other things are going on, the ripening into trichomes and things like that, but it's not going to overdry. So that also eliminates before you would put the flower in a space with an air conditioner or a dehumidifier. And what are they designed to do? Remove water constantly remove water. When you buy a dehumidifier, it's rated in pints per day, and it will do that forever until it turns your flour into crispy little bits. So that's why at some point we would dry, then cure, because we had to arrest the drying process because the room with the air conditioners and dehumidifiers would just keep sucking water out of it and then move it to a sealed container to arrest that drying where in a cool cure, it's at the finished place. So it stores there and holds. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrow at 15 to save on any of their products.